Welcome to day five of my 100 day art challenge. Today I'm going to do an acrylic seascape. I've got um, a very rough sketch here. Got a bit of headland, some sea, another headland, and a path surrounded by bushes and um, plants leading down over the cliffs. So again, this is something I've never painted before. I'm going to give it a go. I've got a selection of colours on a stay wet palette here in front of me and uh, right, I'm just going to give it a go, it's something I've, as I said I've not done before, could be good, could turn out a total disaster, let's see how it goes, I've got a mist spray bottle, got a couple of synthetic brushes and a couple of natural hair brushes. These are Terry Harrison Golden Wizard brushes and I've also got a Terry Harrison Golden Foliage brush. These are really good for stippling, creating texture and, um, and foliage as the name would suggest. Uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy using these brushes actually, they're, they're very good at that. I use them in seascapes to produce the um, foam patterns and, and uh, um, foam. So anyway, I'll get on with it and let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to block in some colour now. I'm going to start off with the sky. I'm going to use a bit of cobalt blue, which is one of my favourite colours for a sky. Just block that in. So a half inch synthetic brush. I'm relatively new to acrylics. I've, I've started off with um, watercolors, and then. I enjoyed uh, seascapes, so the natural progression was through to 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 oils, because the longer working time gave me uh, didn't have to worry too much about drying paint drying too soon too quickly. But then I've actually got I actually got a little bit frustrated with the um, with the drying time. <laughs> bizarrely um, of of oils and uh, despite using liquid and other media and so I've tried acrylics and although sometimes the drying time frustrates me um, I found with with this even with a water sprayer Trying to keep it, keep it dry. Um, I found that uh, it made me work faster. And as I said in other videos, the it's actually made my work much more spontaneous. And. Some indications of some clouds. Yeah, that, that it's actually made. I feel my work more spontaneous. Just going to blend. Although I still love oils. Uh, for. Uh, quick work and the sketches I'm, I'm actually enjoying the acrylics I've actually uh, also used the Atelier interactive acrylics which if you don't know they are um, acrylics that will dry at a normal speed but you 
can also reawaken them with water up to 24 hours after and um, after 24 hours you can use unlocking formula which will make them workable for months afterwards they do, they do take a little bit of getting used to Looking for sort of so that gave me the gives you the best of both worlds really. Just need to concentrate a second while I'm doing this. Um, I have found them sometimes a little bit frustrating. Uh, as you have to remember to lock the layers, you could actually lock the layers by using a different medium. Else the layer underneath becomes workable again, which meant, which means that sometimes when, when you don't want stuff to blend, that they actually do. And uh, you just have to remember to use the correct medium to lock to lock the underlying there. Okay, I'm going to just put a little bit of, just dump a little bit of colour in there, just to roughly suggest detail. We're actually drying very quickly this evening. It's been a nice warm day in Cornwall. This window is quite sunny. All right, let's put some sea in. Got some. Mean blue and some Booker's green just to tone it down. Bit of ultramine as well. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's not a bad colour. Try and put in a nice straight red light. blocking always trying to keep the brush strokes in the direction of going in the direction of what you want so the C should be horizontal so put it in with horizontal strokes that's going to be the headland. I'll go back over this and put some texture into it in a second. I've never made, uh, really made videos before, so I'm. Much, this is very much a learning curve, producing these videos at the moment. Hopefully, you'll see an improvement in quality as I learn better ways of doing them, and. Uh, Okay. At the moment, I'm just.
just using natural light and uh, a desk lamp with a daylight bulb which hopefully won't uh, will stop the colours distorting and the world's artificial room lights. But I have had problems with with um, with flickering and what have you, but I will get it sorted. I do want to carry on producing videos. Okay, let's put a bit of green in. A little bit too much green there. Like the way that's lift some of that off. Yeah, I actually do like the way that's uh, blending in with the back of the other sea. actually going to be behind the bushes one of the other essential art materials that I have is a cup of tea I do like my cup of tea just coming from work as I said it's been very warm and sunny today I work outside as a gardener for a large country estate and It's uh, this is fantastic on these lovely warm days like today. Not so good when it's pouring with rain or freezing cold. <laughs> I'm not going to put too much. Let's put it to the indication. Have some waves. Can always come back in and add some more in a minute. Okay, right, let's get this closer headland blocked in. I want a nice dark for that, so I've got uh, burnt umber and full trimming blue. I'm going to add a touch of green into that. That's quite a nice, yeah. It's dark, dark. Let's take that up over here. I've always been fascinated by the sea. And uh, I loved coming to Cornwall on holiday, and now I'm lucky enough to live here. Where I work, it overlooks overlooks the bay, and in lots of places in the garden, I can actually see the sea, and it's. Uh, Although it is distant, you can sort of see the sparkle on the water in the distance. And okay. 
Right, and now I'm going to add some highlights to this rock. I've got some burnt sienna. Uh, raw sienna, sorry. moving quickly just suggesting texture in the rocks Here at the top, I'm just going to put in some green, a little touch of green. I'm going to represent grass and plant at the top. There you go, I think. I'll see how that dries. Right now, I'm going to have a path, so it comes around here, comes around here. On the path, I'm going to put in a base of raw sienna. Nice sort of sandy. You'll notice I didn't clean my brush, I'm just letting all the colours work in. Although I've got lots of colours up on my palette, I'm actually working with the basic view. That's the base level of the path down. Now I want a really dark, dark green for the, as a background for the hedge. So I'm going to put some of the burnt over into the hooker's green. And then a touch of Ultramine. It's a nice dark green. Okay, right. Now. Just scrubbing this in.
and this is going to be the basis for all the other foliage which is going to go on. This dark will give it, hopefully, give it. I say hopefully. <laughs> give the foliage depth. Okay, I'm gonna mix up some more for the right hand side. Ultramine, Hooker's Green. Take that up over the background cliff. Put some nice. Just let that dry for a second or two. Let's try a, another sip of tea. Right, now I'm going to mix up some variations of different greens. A nice bright sunlit green, which is Hooker's green and cadmium yellow. Then I'm going to mix green with a little bit of burnt sienna. Let's give us a nice warm grassy green a bit more you know I'll give my palette a quick mist okay let's get a golden wizard brush and now I'll stipple on Basic shapes of bushes and plants and what have you. Put some of the lighter colour. This blends with the sort of lightly mist. Oh, not too much there. very dark right I'll have to wash my brush well that stage of the painting where I begin to think oh my word it's all gone wrong
Cornwall this time of year. Rose are covered in gorse, the yellow flowers of gorse. I think that's looking quite good actually. Got some cadmium in yellow. Represents the course very, very well. Gentle stippling in this brush. This this brush, uh, Terry Harrison, is a Terry Harrison brush, as I said. It originally was designed as a watercolour brush. So he used it in his watercolours. And um, I use it in acrylics. I've used, even used it in oil, with oils, actually. It's a very versatile brush. Some of that gorse, some of the yellow. Also, at this this time of year, there's a lot of pink campion, purple loose strife, fox. Well, not quite yet, but there will be fox gloves. And we get the spikes of the foxgloves. I'll go over when it's a little bit dry I'll put in some of the stronger stronger colours some uh, more distinct some more white more white daisies but I don't want too many of these because they'll dry oh, he says putting in a big big clump I don't like these fox gloves, so I shall just stipple them out and then Okay, I think that, that's looking that's looking quite effective at the moment. I've just had a look uh, 
into the camera and uh, see the paper when he's moving over. It actually looks better in real life, I must say. Uh, the camera does seem to be saturating the colours. Okay, well, what I'll do is I'll take a photo of this when it's when it's done. Right, we need some gorse on this side. I'll take a photograph of when the, of the of this when it's done, and. Uh, which will hopefully show the colours more true to life. Actually, the other, the other uh, Not the off it. Flowers that are quite prevalent at this time of year, bluebells. So yeah. we'll, uh, touch in a little bit of I'm a little bit concerned it's looking a bit uh, uniform at the moment. I don't like that. Time for some remedial action here. I don't like that. It's just that's better. Just tone it down a bit of tissue. Take a little some of that pigment off. Okay, right. Let me. What do I need to do? We need a little bit more. forward Uh, 
some of that down. Up that top edge. Again, a bit happy with that. I need to sort something out along that line there. I need to put some texture in the path. like a cliff path <laughs> Bob Ross would say, I think that was a happy little accident. I touched into the, uh, wasn't looking what I was doing, I touched into the move there. But uh, that was. I'm actually quite pleased with how that looked. Okay, it's beginning to come together now. I'm I like the distant headland, I like the I like this headland. I'm quite happy with the path and this this side. Um needs still need some work on it. Don't like the path edges. Path edges need quite a bit of work. And this looks a bit of a jungle to me. And I need to do some work on the sea. Oops, uh, so it's all coming good. Or well, hopefully will all come good.
through into the, to the path there. Right. Try and get some, like I say, a nice little sunlit green. Start stippling in. Some grass. Coming in, just breaking on that edge. the wrong colour there. Let's get some of this. Lighter green, let's break up this line. Looking a bit more like it. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. That's coming on. Right, now I need some more pink. Bit of bluebell. Knock that back a little bit. Whoops, just okay. Right. Okay. 
Right now, I want to bring a couple of things I need to do here. This spot there on the headland. A bit of uh, foam and stuff in the sea. disappearing off down the cliff into the sea okay um, mm. am I happy with this Ooh, no <laughs> um, there are elements I like elements I don't like it's uh don't think I'll be hanging this one on my wall. I've uh, enjoyed doing it. It's something that I haven't done before. Uh, I'd like to try again. Probably, I'd probably try it in oils. Actually, it's, it's something I'd like to do in oils. Uh, it's a bit too dark. I don't. I'm not happy with the colour of the sea. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of things that I would would actually change about this, but it's been a good learning learning exercise. Okay, I'm going to put a mat around it and take a photo of it in hopefully better light, and then uh, see how it looks. Okay, thank you for watching.